And I promise you, when you leave that farmhouse, you will be forever changed. When you see a movie that says based on, you know, true events and stuff like that, this is actually real. We just got back from abandonment and, and literally we walked through the door and stuff started going wild. And all hell broke loose in that house that night. It was really the most horrendous event of my entire life. I've never seen anything like that before. Oh, whoa. That was a big spike. There's no part of the house that's not active, Jason. Whoa! I got chills, dude. That sounded just like arguments. I swear something just not touched the back of my leg. It felt like something just touched the back of my leg. Have you ever been touched in here? What was that? Did you hear that? I heard something. For some reason, I'm on edge. I don't have an explanation for how that could be possible. That is probably one of the craziest things we've we've had happen. On this adventure for our paranormal quest, we have traveled to Burrowville, Rhode Island. And this farmhouse that sits behind me is almost 300 years old. This house has gone by many names over the years. The Harrisville Farm, the Arnold Estate, but now it is known for the violent haunting that occurred inside this house that inspired the famous Hollywood film, The Conjuring. The Perrin family lived for nearly a decade inside this house and they experience paranormal activity, some of it extreme and violent. Tonight, we're gonna see if the haunting that was portrayed in that movie is accurate, and if we can have paranormal experiences that correlate with the Perrin family and many families that have lived inside this home. It is a couple nights away from our investigation. Right now, I am about to speak to the best source of information on the history and the hauntings of this home. She grew up in the house, her and her family, and she was the eldest of five sisters. The experiences that her and her family had in this house and on the farm inspired the hit Hollywood film, The Conjuring. I'm very excited right now to be speaking with my friend, Andrea Perrin. Hello, Andrea. Again, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to speak with me on, on this house, your, your home place. When was your first experience? How soon after arriving at the farm did you have one? Well, my first experience of the farm was when I was 11, and my mother had discovered it in June of 1970. And so she put all the money in the world that we had as a family down to hold it until my father came home from a business trip he was on and my experience of it was even though it was normal you know it, we were still a perfectly normal family we had not crossed over into paranormal yet um it felt like home to me and that was my first experience of it we didn't purchase it until December of 1970 and we didn't move into it until January 11th 1971 and the first thing that happened was I walked into the house uh, with a box off the big moving van my father said take this to your mother in the kitchen and I rounded the corner into the dining room and Mr. Kenyon was standing there and he was packing the last of his possessions that had been in the corner cabinet, the china hutch. I walked into the dining room and I said, good morning, Mr. Kenyon. And you know, by that time we knew him really well and he was so sweet and so kind. And I talked to him, I picked up the box, I turned and there was a man standing there that I hadn't noticed when I first walked in the room. And he was dressed oddly and he looked like flesh and blood to me. I did not 
mistake him for anything other than a living, breathing human being who I assumed was a friend of Mr. Kenyon's. And as I passed him, I said, good morning, sir. And he looked right through me like he could not even see me. And I went into the kitchen and I said, mom, who's that man with Mr. Kenyon? And she said, there's nobody with Mr. Kenyon. His son's on the way. He's not here yet. So Corey, when exactly did you and your wife buy this house? Uh, we purchased this house uh, June 21st of 2019. And when you bought the house, you knew of its reputation? Oh, of course. You, and, you have to know. Yes. And how long after you moved in did you experience paranormal activity? Oh, we experienced paranormal activity the day we moved in. Really? Yeah. Uh, we came in the front door that you guys came in when you first came in. Um, one of the doors opened as we were walking in. So it was like an immediate like reaction instead of bringing in like totes of clothes and stuff like that, we were moving in with DVR systems and stuff like that. Do you recall right off exactly how many people had owned the farm prior to uh, uh, your family? Uh, the farm was built, the land for it was deeded in 1680. Mr. Kenyon was the last in a very, very long line that stretched eight generations that began with the Richardson family who built the house. And then it later became through marriage, the Arnold estate. When you think about some of your experiences you had in, in, at the farm, uh, the you know paranormal experiences, the spiritual experiences, which may be a couple that comes to your mind right off. The night of the seance when the Warrens came, it was August of 74. Uh, and they insisted that a seance needed to occur in the house, that they needed to determine who the culprit was that was causing problems in the house. And they brought a medium and they brought a priest and they had photographers, cinematographers, they had an audio specialist, they had a, you know, kind of an entourage with them and, and all hell broke loose in that house that night. It was really the most horrendous event of my entire life. Um, and I wasn't a part of it, I witnessed it. And that night, uh, whatever it was that the medium conjured which is really where the name of the film came from, was me explaining to the producers that she was conjuring the spirits and calling forth, throwing open wide the doors to the netherworld with four children of the five of us in the house, which, you know, was malpractice as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, that was really horrible because what I saw occur in the house that night and I was supposed to be upstairs with my other sisters. I wasn't supposed to be down watching. I saw my mother be levitated and I saw her suffering. I saw her screaming and howling in pain. Uh, the table came up, it slammed down on the floor. My mother's chair came up with her in it. And then in a split second, it tossed her from the middle of our dining room into the middle of the parlor and her head struck the floor. And, um, and I will never ever forget the feeling that I had just watched my mom die. We weren't here. Right. You know, like Lorraine Warren, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the Warrens. Mm -hmm. I, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the parents. I don't know what they experienced. Right. I can tell you right now, there there is something here. I have we haven't experienced on that level yet, but they had they had all their ducks in a row. It, it was enough to warrant the investigations. It's coming from the land. Yeah, um, we're sitting on two major ley lines. Um, we sit on a large aquifer of water. Uh, we're sitting on the old New Hampshire River, which was covered over during the last ice age. All these are good conductors of energy. Mm -hmm. um, if you ever look at the property from like Google Earth, it's actually shaped like a triangle. That's weird. You know, all these things just kind of like, they stick out to you and it's like, you know, I'm not really into the metaphysical side of things, but I've seen way too much in my time investigating to dismiss it. 
have you ever had any feelings or ideas as to maybe what energy, what spirit was actually in, oppressing your mother that night? No. Uh, I, all I know is that it was pure evil. And as I've said probably a thousand times in the last decade or so, I have seen the dark side of existence, and that's why I deliberately choose to live in the light. But the story of the of Bathsheba that Lorraine picked up on, do you find any validity to the story of that Bathsheba haunting? Bathsheba was a person. Mm -hmm. She lived across the street. Um, you know, Lorraine picked up on something. Uh, Carolyn picked up on something. We can't provide no proof of it. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't in their shoes. I wasn't here. Um, I know I can prove that she wasn't a witch just because she's buried on consecrated ground. There's no police record saying she was arrested for murder. She was never tried for murder. Her children died of typhus. There was no proof that she had done anything to harm the child, but in the court of public opinion, she was tried and convicted and lived a long, miserable life. I mean, she was born in 1812 and she died in 1885. She did not die by hanging, she had a stroke. I always felt like she got a bad rap, you know, that I just, I just don't think that you should accuse somebody of murder unless you have proof. I think probably one of the neater things about this whole story is like, when you see a movie that says based on, you know, true events and stuff like that, this is actually real. Case in point, we're out back with ground penetrating radar looking for bodies. Why? Because a spirit told Cindy Perrin as her bed was levitating that there were seven dead soldiers buried in the wall. So we did ground penetrating radar all through the yard and the basement. And sure enough, down by the wall, but down by the rock wall, there's five grave shafts. There was no reason for us to be out there. And, and another thing is, it's not the Arnold family. The Arnold family family plot is actually three miles this way. So th there's no record of who's back here. Right. You know, and it's it's not one of those, hey, oh my God, there's bodies buried in my backyard. It's New England. It's not that big a deal. You know, it's there's no record of them, but yet this little girl says a story and it just so happens 40 years later, we're out there looking around and sure enough, there's bodies back there. You find those bodies. Yeah. Yeah. As far as some of the more active areas in the house, do you believe maybe the dining hall would be one of them, the dining room? There's no part of the house that's not active, Jason. There is not a square inch of that farmhouse that hasn't had something happen in it repeatedly. Uh, yeah. Okay, I might be able to talk to you while you're there, and I do that with groups that I know. Okay. Uh, and, um, and I'm sure at some point I'll be able to talk to you Friday night. I'm sure I will. It's like the spirits know I'm on the phone, or they hear me through the speakerphone, or whatever, and because of my attachment and connection with them, uh, things begin to happen in the house. Um, and so I would be happy to do that for you and happy to do that with your crew. And, you know, even if we just spend a half an hour on the phone, I'll be able to pick up on energies and you'll be able to just have your cameras and your filming and everything, your audio, your video, have it ready when we talk at the farm. Oh, absolutely. Oh my God, that'd be, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> That's perfect. For this abandonment session, we'll be using the repurposed REM pod that Dave and I made after the antenna broke off. We connected copper wire to the antenna cable inside the device, and with an alligator clamp, we can turn any metal object into the antenna of this REM pod. Last investigation at the West Virginia Penitentiary, we used it on the execution cap to the electric chair. Awesome. Cool. There we go.
On this investigation, Steve had the idea to connect it to the metal door handle on the door that leads to the basement. So now, we're using a piece of this famously haunted house as the antenna to our REM pod. Just 30 seconds after we walk out the door to leave this house empty, the REM pod indicates that something is touching the door handle. 30 seconds later, it does it again. And then, three seconds after that, For almost eight minutes straight, the REM pod indicates an energy is coming into contact with the door handle, fading out, and then making contact again. After eight minutes, the REM pod falls silent. For now. just went off up here. You turn the camera off? This one is running. It's Watch going out. off again. The cat ball's going off up here too. Same time. Cat ball upstairs and this one off at the same time two times each. EDI just went off too. Oh, wow. EDI just went off. Oh sh**. Dude, what if Ryan walked up there and scared it down the steps? We just got back from abandonment and, and literally we walked through the door and stuff started going wild. That's a good possibility. Hard to say. Hello? In the audio. Hello? Wow. Audio. Can you light up something else again? Can you touch that one on the bed in there? Are you trying to move the door? You can put your hand all the way down on that. Can you slide it across the floor? Try and give it a good push. It won't hurt it. It won't hurt you either. We didn't mean to startle you. We have permission to be here by the new property owner. My name's Steve. So my good friends Jason, Dave, and Ryan's upstairs. That was quiet as can be when we came in here. Mm -hmm. That was the last one in. Can you push the door open? That was quiet as can be when we came in here. Mm -hmm. That was the last one in. Can you push the door open? I was the last one in. Can you push the door open? I was the last one in. Can you push the door open? Whoa. Oh. Something just touched the back of my waist. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah. I just got touched. Are you here with us? I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna start walking from the top of the stairs. Ryan's going to come down the stairs and see if that will push him down that way. I'm coming down. Can you push that door open? Okay. 
Can you touch this right here that's in my hand? Hmm. Went to orange. The rim. You say it went up to orange? Yeah, yeah went, I went close to this one, see? That's oh, me. that's you, yeah. Hello, Andrea. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> I am. I tell you, I am very good. We are doing very well here. You know, it is so crazy that I just stepped out and I had a smoke and I texted you and I came back in this room next to the dining room and seen your text. You said the house is already activated and it is so wild you said that because we just left the house for about an hour to get dinner. We left some equipment and cameras rolling in the house. And when we walked back into this room, the REM pod, the static proximity meter on the floor actually started triggering. And we started having a bunch of strange things happening all at once. Okay, well, let me tell you what happened. About an hour to maybe an hour and a half ago, I was just laying here in my bedroom on my bed and I had a vision of that room full of equipment but no people in it and I started seeing movement in the room and I got a message um, from one of the spirits in the house and I don't know which one but the message was we know they're here we'll be um, we'll be gentle with them or kind to them or something to that effect. They are um, ready, willing, and able to cooperate and communicate with you tonight. And then I started seeing movement in the room and lights flashing. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. And, and they let me know that they know that you're there. They know who you are and they know that I care about you. And they will be gentle with you, and they're not going to do anything to totally freak you out, but you are definitely going to have communication tonight. There is no question of it. None. I've almost got chills, <laughs> you telling me that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you want to have some communication and you want to feel uh, a presence beside you, go stand on the hearthstone in front of the fireplace. Put my hand on it? You don't have to. All you have to do is stand there. Okay. I'm standing here right now. And then tell me which side of your body feels cold. <laughs> My left side. Yep. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, my left side. I can feel it, Andrea. I can feel it. It's getting cold on my left hand. It, it's getting cold right here on my left hand next to the stairs that lead up to your room. Yeah. Wow, this is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. Or at least a dozen active spirits in the house while we were there. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. that are coming from upstairs are coming from the morning room which is that long dark room that has the oddly shaped door right off of my old bedroom okay okay what the spirits have taught me in the 10 years that we lived there and the connections and the attachments that were formed no pun intended <laughs> but real attachments were formed Right. Um, and not just with me, but with other members of my family as well. Because I always felt like it was home, that it was the only place that ever really felt like home to me in my whole life. Every place else on this planet feels temporary to me, but the farm feels permanent. Uh, with the spirits in the house, you know, there were other forces in the house as well that I have no control over. Um, they were invited in uh the spirits that were there i came to terms of endearment with 
and felt a familial attachment to. And so what I can tell them tonight is, hello, my darlings. I might be 1,200 miles away from you right now, but we all know that there is no such thing as time or distance. And I am right there with you, and I love you dearly, and I appreciate the messages that you sent to me a little while ago. Steve and Dave and Jason and Ryan are with all of you tonight. They are there to commune with you, not to hurt you in any way. They just want to know you. They want to have experiences with you. And whatever you share of yourselves with them will profoundly change their lives and their understanding of who you are and why you're there. Because what they will do is later after we have this time together tonight, they will con continue to talk with me about their experiences and we will share some more of what we experienced when we lived there, when the Perrin family lived with you. And so what I want you to do tonight, at your leisure, at your pleasure, and with whatever energy you have to muster, and they will share their energy with you. These are young, strong men. You know, they, they bring with them knowledge and understanding and a desire to know you. And they will share their energy with you. These are young, strong men. You know, they, they bring with them. And they will share their energy so that you may draw upon that to manifest in whatever form you are able. It's all right to let them know that you are there. Somebody's reaching out to touch one of you right now on one of your shoulders. Tell me who it is and who feels it. Me. It was Ryan. My right shoulder it's right by the basement door that we just heard a knock on. If you open that door and step into it, you will feel a drastic temperature change. That's where they hide when they're reticent about losing the house. So if you open that what door, the um, I'll speak to them and let them know. There, okay. I, I just tried to open um, the door three times. Ryan said that he just tried to open the door three times. And it wouldn't open, and then I stopped. And I pulled the handle again and it came right open. It was like something was holding the door shut. That was really weird. That's a little game that they play. Yeah, when you read my books, you'll read all about that. That is yeah. awesome. That's just proof positive that they're on the other side. <laughs> we're entering the, the, the morning room. That's where many babies were born and many died. What I feel in that room more than any other room in the house is sadness and loss. It makes me think of all the little tiny gravestones at the Arnold Cemetery that don't even have a name on them. 300 years ago was a hard time to be born into this world. And very, very many people didn't make it. In fact, it was considered extremely bad luck to even name your baby before its first birthday. Wow. Think of the grief that the women went through after carrying a child in their womb for nine months and going through all of the pain of natural childbirth and then losing your baby to the common cold. That would just, that would just tear, tear you in pieces. Yes. I think that you should go into the center bedroom, the room that's, uh, there's an outside window between the two bedrooms. And, and that was, I believe, Cynthia's room? Yeah, it was Cindy and Christine. Well, you know, we all moved around and used different bedrooms. Uh, 
there's an outside window between the two bedrooms. Uh, there's an outside window between the two bedrooms. It's the middle bedroom where Cindy heard the voices all speaking together at once, saying to her, there are seven dead soldiers buried in the wall. There are seven dead soldiers buried in the wall. But yet this little girl says a story and it just so happens 40 years later, we're out there looking around and sure enough, there's bodies back there. You find those bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're getting situated. I'm going to actually, do you think it would be okay if I sit on the bed? Sure. Okay, I'm gonna sit on the end of the bed. And we are now all four in the center room. The doors are open on either side. But um, they're curious about you. You might pick up somebody kind of peeking around the door or a corner. Uh, they're curious. Yeah, there's activity downstairs between the, um, the dining room and the library. It's downstairs. They want you to go downstairs. Okay, they feel comfortable with you now. That is very good. have some really outstanding experiences tonight. My advice to you is to keep your mind open, keep your heart open, and keep your eyes open, and keep cameras at the ready. Stay completely open to the experience and I promise you, when you leave that farmhouse, you will be forever changed. I don't want him to be able to hear us, but I also don't want us to whisper. Yeah, I, he won't be able to. He won't be able to hear us. We stand closer than that and do it sometimes. We just spoke with Andrea on the phone not long ago. She said you would be here with us. Are you here with us? We were just speaking to Andrea a little bit ago on the phone. Hopefully you were able to hear her. There's a very faint woman's voice, but I can't understand what she's saying. It's really quiet. Please speak to Ryan as loud and as clearly as you can. He's right in there in Cynthia's room. What was that? I heard that. Is anybody from the Arnold family here with us? Susan, are you here with us? There was a voice there, couldn't make it out. What was that? Sounded like a whistle. Yeah. yeah. It did. Took that board downstairs. Remember? Yeah.
Oh, there you go. Temperature drop. Air pressure as well. <clears throat> Can you make the other little green light beside that go off too? See how that's lighting up for you? You can keep drying it. Can you tell Ryan who touched Steve, him, and myself earlier? Hasn't been doing that the entire time we've been up here. Uh -uh. What's that? It's getting colder and warmer at the same time. Where is Ryan standing right now? He's standing in the chimney closet. He'd love, love to talk to you. I was hearing absolutely nothing. I wasn't hearing anything, nothing. I'm really frustrated because after Andrea talked to the spirits through the phone, I had high hopes for this Estes Method spirit box session. None of us had any idea that we captured the explanation as soon as we started the session. Hearing this disembodied voice explains to us why nothing was talking through the S-Box. They simply didn't like this piece of equipment. If there's anyone in this room, or in this house, we're friends of Andrea Perrin. Thought I heard something downstairs there. <clears throat> I did too. Thought I heard something downstairs there. We believe we're hearing you. Could we please hear your voice or hear you walk or knock on the wall? Andrea says that this place is magical. And she says you all are magical. We'd love to meet you. I'm going to go ahead and cut on this just so it doesn't do what it did last time. Okay. <clears throat> there a little bit ago, uh, Steve, you were filming Dave. This mm -hmm. is probably about four to five minutes ago. Yeah. And I noticed the K2 actually went up to the second light for about, uh, oh, about okay. half a second. Just did it there. Oh, okay. Did you see how that lighted up in the window there? If you can see those lights flashing, or if you can see those lights, if you get close to it, it'll actually, just like that, see, it'll flash for you. You can do it as much as you like. I appreciate you standing in front of the window. If, uh, if you were responding to that, we, we appreciate that. There's, a, there's just like a very strong like sense of energy like right here like in the stairwell mm -hmm. I don't I've got cold chills so bad I'm freezing right here yeah Bathsheba are you here with us that one. temperature's trying to drop what was that there was something back here behind me That was trying to draw. What was that? There was something back here behind me. Andrea did say that, you know, she felt what upwards of 12 mm -hmm. spirits in here. 
Exactly. Yeah. These K2 hits can be multiple. You know what I mean? Are they more than? Are they higher than the two lights, or is it just the second light? Just a, oh, whoa. Just a second. That was a big spike. What did it go to? Orange. Orange, but it was like a bit. It hit or like orange, orange. Like it wasn't just a flash of orange. It was more solid. Yeah. Come over here. Whoa. Did you guys do anything with your... With what? That was weird. I just saw, literally right here, I just saw like a, a hook, a bright... Very bright light light. Like it was just shaped like a like a fishing hook. It's weird. That was very strange. I've never seen anything like that before. Alright, so Steve and I are gonna go sit out in the car here for the next part of this Harrisville farmhouse investigation while Dave and Jason stay inside the house and see if smaller numbers, if just the two of them inside the house will help draw out some of the entities. Having all four of us in locations does seem to hinder some of the activity. You put us down in groups of two or less, things come alive. So we're going to go ahead and head out to the car here, and we'll see what happens. I'll take that camera. Good luck, guys. And best of luck, guys. I'm going to lock you out, too. Yeah, you better. Hello, if there's anyone that can hear us. My name's Jason. This is Dave. What's your name? Come speak with us, please. Andrea wanted you to speak with us. Can you do that? Did you hurt her mother? Right when we were finishing up upstairs, uh... Dave was definitely picking up on something like a real prominent, like a real strong energy in that uh, stairwell uh, mm -hmm. coming up from the first floor from the very, the actual front door. Just a oh, whoa. Just a that was a big spike. Up to with the room we were in. Mm -hmm. So the first bedroom, it was... Uh, that was an interesting uh, session, we'll say, I guess. I think, I, I feel there were multiple people that we potentially made contact with. If someone is upstairs or in the basement and can hear us, would you please come upstairs with Dave and I into the dining room? Could you show yourself to us, please? We'd love that. We'd love that. Remember Ed and Lorraine Warren being here? As Andrea always says that this place is magical. Yeah. And that she feels like there's some sort of portal between dimensions here in this spot, whether it be because of, like Corey said, the ley lines 
or some other reason that has to do with the different waterways that run through the area, but there is some strange phenomenon that goes on with this this house and I think the Perrin family experienced that when they lived here and I think we're experiencing it tonight. Yeah, absolutely. You can use all the energy you need from our equipment. You can use Dave and I's energy. Please come in to speak with us. Could you make that sound again? What happened in this room right here? over 40 years ago to the Perrin family. Remember Carolyn, Roger, Andrea, her sisters, Ed, Lorraine Warren, they were all here. Do you know who they were communicating with? There's, I mean, there's multiple times I know I felt um, just chills, like not in a bad way per se, just that overall, like that all enveloping sense of just energy rush. Mm -hmm. you know? and it's been a while since we've, I think, at least that, that I can recall feeling that. You know. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's always the part of investigating that I, I really enjoy because it makes you feel even more alive. Yes. And you communicating with us will help us to show other people that there's more to life than just here on Earth. I heard like a door or some knock. What was that? In a couple moments, my friend Dave and I are going to go outside for a little bit. And our friends Steve and Ryan will be coming in. And they're just as anxious to speak with you all. All right, uh, Ryan and I are going to be starting our... Uh, wait, wait, wait. I just heard movement above your head. Yeah, we were hearing that in the kitchen, too. We were getting ready. Dave and Jason just finished their uh, duo session here at the Harrisville Farmhouse. Ryan and I are going to be heading down into the basement. We haven't covered that area yet. And I'm going to try to make communication with them. So we've got a couple cameras with us. Some motion activated balls, and we have the S box. We're going to try with the pedal box this time and see if uh, see what we get. Go ahead. Down the basement. Okay. So all the pedal box is is a an amp with these pedals attached to it, and it hooks into a spirit box. So it filters out the white noise sweeping. So, oh, did you hear that? It said hello. Yeah. Hello. My name's Steve. It's my friend Ryan. Our friends Dave and Jason were in here earlier. Where? Whoa, where? what's that? It's not like some where. I think they were upstairs. I think. Whoa. That's not like someone went, oh. It's been very fascinating, very interesting. Um, 
you know, we've already had a few strange things happen to us. Um, you seen a strange light upstairs. I did. That was very weird. That was weird. I just saw, literally right here, I just saw like a, a hook, a bright, very bright white light. We had some peculiar uh, interaction with the K2 in the bedroom upstairs. Oh yeah, yeah we did. Do you remember Andrea Perrin? Did it yes? If you remember Andrea Perrin, can you just say Andrea? Can you say her name? Can you say her name? What about her father? Do you remember her father's name? Yes. Did you hear that? I heard that. Very yeah. clear. Yes. We just had something very odd happen, though. Do you want to explain that? Oh, gosh, yeah. Um, a little freaky. So, obviously, you know, we're out here, and um, a little bit ago, Dave was actually playing a scene from the Conjuring film, and he was actually including some behind-the-scenes footage of Lorraine Warren speaking. And I was like this, as I am now. Dave's right here, and we're watching it. And all of a sudden, the car here just rocked back and forth one time. Yeah, yeah. Like someone sat down in the back seat or something. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a very not a violent shake or anything, but you know, you you felt the car shake. It, I mean, it was. Yeah, I mean, we're totally still. We are. This is weighs a ton. <laughs> that was odd. And and Ryan and uh, Steve are still inside, so... Where's your recorder at? Oh, temperature drop. Pressure change. Very much a pressure change as it drops. I didn't catch it though. When the Perrin family lived here, One of the daughters, Cindy, had an experience where she said she was overcome with an energy and actually her bed lifted up off the ground. She had a vision of something that came true here. Corey actually found something here. Can you tell us what Corey found that Cindy saw? anyone here with me. My name's Jason. Can you tell me your name, please? Do you live in this house or are you just passing through? I'm sure you remember the Perrin family. Can you tell me who slept in this room when the Perrins lived here in this house? I invite anyone in the house here that can hear me. Please come into this room with me and speak with me. Right here in front of me is a Van de Graaff generator. Basically, to crank to this wheel, it will begin to charge up. And when you take this wand here, is when you discharge the electricity into the atmosphere. So in theory, kind of similar to an EM pump, just a little bit different. 
something that spirits can hopefully use to interact. If you can see this this thing in front of me, it won't harm you. I'm going to turn this on. Please feel free to get as close as you can. And you can take energy from me, the equipment, and from this here. You can use all that energy to communicate if you like. get a little closer to me it'll be easier for you to speak you can use this energy Oddly, as Jason cranks the Van de Graaff generator, arcs of static electricity begin to jump from the ball and into the air, as if something is taking energy from it before Jason discharged the generator. He did notice this as it was happening, but he didn't say anything about it at the time, because he wasn't sure if it was peculiar or not. Jason cranked the Van de Graaff a few more times before ending his solo session. After this, we did one final session in the dining room, which is now the living room of the house, and received absolutely no unexplained activity or evidence. It seems as though the energy this house held at the beginning of the night has been expended. It's hard to believe that eight years ago, we sat in a packed movie theater together, watching the hit horror blockbuster that would spark a whole universe of feature films. And tonight, we experienced its inspiration for ourselves. Whoa! Is it? Yeah. There's, uh, there's uh, things going off on the door handle. Are they more than? Are they higher than the two lights, or is it just the second light? Just a, oh, whoa! Just a second. That was a big spike. Can you say your name? At the beginning of this investigation, Andrea told us, Stay completely open to the experience, and I promise you when you leave that farmhouse, you will be forever changed. Man, was she right. The house doesn't know day or night. You know, it's active all the time. She used crystal ball and mirrors and invited things into the house and didn't ask them to leave. Did Monica turn mirrors into portals? Portals that have never been closed? He had gotten scratched. We lifted up his shirt. It was forming as we lifted it up. If you're trying to talk to me, tell me not to leave. Come back. All right. There's something in the mirror. Wow. Holy crap. Who is it that likes to scratch people down here and likes to attack people? That's it, stand right in front of it. That sounded like a woman's voice right there. What the hell? Dude, no way. I am covered in chills, dude. Within the city of Kokomo, Indiana, sits a house that by all appearances 
looks normal. But hiding within these walls are stories of tragedy, cruelty, sadness, witchcraft, and hauntings. The perfect recipe for ghost stories that the current owners believe open portals that have flooded the house with spirits and entities that aren't afraid to make themselves known to anyone who enters. How soon after you actually started investigating or even after you purchased the house, mm -hmm. how soon after did you start to experience unexplained right activity? Away. Right away. Right away. The house doesn't know day or night. You know, it's active all the time. The house was built in 1910 by Robert C. Davies, his wife, Louisa, um, two of the four children, Orville and Walter, resided here with him. Robert Davies passed away in 1939. His wake was here. Walter um, passed away at a young age. He was about 17 or 18. That was in 1916. His wake was here, and Orville passed away in 1920. The wife, Louisa, she passed away in 1950. Everyone passed away in the family from GI or colon type issues, except for Louisa, and she passed away from pneumonia. And you can imagine the energy that might be left behind here in this room from those wakes. This is their family's home. And exactly. back in those days, if when you died, you wanted to have your funeral, your wake in, in, in your home. So. Yeah. But Mike and Hope believe that the Davies family had such a strong connection to this house that they refused to leave, even after death. Very first time I ever walked through, I felt a, a presence right here in the middle of this room. And it was very hard to get away from it. That presence, that entity that you felt or picked up on, did you feel it was something negative? Do you think it was Mr. Davy? Do you I... think... I'm inclined to want to believe it was maybe Mr. Davies. Okay. Uh, maybe welcoming me to the house. Okay. Um, but it was a very, very strong presence right here. We've gotten so much response in the living room related to the Davies. We hear the old man coughs and sneezes. Sometimes it's just us girls in here. I was uh, vacuuming one day and staying right here in the, at the couch and um, I can smell an old man's cigar smoke, very strong. But it's right in this area only. We get a lot of response here lately from Louisa. She tends to not like a lot of people. We have a lot of shadow play right here in this hallway. But the Davies family aren't the only vocal spirits on the first floor. In the bedroom, it's believed that you can find a woman named Rita, who was abused and imprisoned by her husband, Paul. Rita's sister, Christine, had sent me a message on Facebook. The information was that she was in the third or fourth of seven bad marriages. Each husband seemed to abuse Rita just a little bit more. She was pretty much confined to the bedroom. She wasn't allowed to have very many friends or family come visit her. She wasn't allowed to leave. If he went to work, supposedly she locked the door. The story of her captivity is heartbreaking, and that emotion can still be felt to this day. The room is decorated with dolls and toys, all of which Rita is said to play with. Kind of makes sense, because if you don't socialize with anybody, you kind of go backwards in how you think and process things, so you do kind of become childlike. We um, had a, a team that was in here one time that uh, she sat against this wall, and she had a purse on it, and she had... Uh, something tugged back on her, and she thought somebody had pulled her. And then Hope had set the, stood there one night. I was over here against the wall, and she thought I had brushed up against her hair, and I wasn't even touching her. Do you think that's Rita? It very well could be. The energy that we get in there typically is childlike. She likes to pull on people, play with hair, um, tug on clothes. And as you can see, Rita's name here on the wall. And Rita was murdered by her seventh husband, but not in this house. This history so far would be more than enough to justify a haunting. But waiting for us on the second floor is a story much more chilling. 
The Davies house has a theme that stretches through its history, a theme of failed romantic relationships. This time, a woman named Monica, when asked by her ex to move out of the house, used witchcraft to make sure he'd never be comfortable in his own home again. She had supposedly opened some portals. She used crystal ball and mirrors and invited things into the house and didn't ask them to leave. And it was kind of a revenge tactic. Well, if you don't want me here, I'm going to make sure you remember me. Up until recently, all of the mirrors Monica used to open the portals were still in the house. But when the previous owner, Hope's stepfather, thought he was going to sell the house to someone else, he said the mirrors had to go. We had two mirrors upstairs that I didn't want on my personal property, and so we just kind of threw them on the side of the road into the river. They both shattered. When that sale fell through, and Mike and Hope ended up buying the house instead, they decided to buy new mirrors for the sake of paranormal research because the original ones were thought to be disposed of. But then they made a shocking discovery. The other mirrors were tossed along the road. And so this one here actually appeared back into our garage. And we have no idea how it got there. So we brought that back over here because I don't want it at my property. <laughs> If Monica truly succeeded in her revenge plot to open portals within the house, it's hard to tell what kind of spirits or entities have moved in to call the Davies house their home. But as we're about to find out, the darkest and most tragic story still waits for us in the basement. Deb was at the end of a relationship and um, she was being forced to move out. She was going to move in with an ex. And uh, that's not really what she had wanted, so she wrote a Dear John letter. So he says, well, see what state of mind she's in. I'm going to get all my ammo out, my guns out, take them across the street. And as he's coming down the staircase, he realizes, I may have forgotten one. So he rushes back up. He thinks that that's when she kicked the chair out from underneath her, is when he started to go downstairs and turn around. Um, when he went back down there later, she was of course, gone, and he cut her down and brought her up here to the living room and couldn't revive her. Um, as you can tell, these right here is steel PVC conduit. Yeah. Okay, this is where she hung herself here. Another failed relationship, this time fatal. The tragic ending to Deb's story has led many investigators to believe that her spirit may still be here in this basement. I came down here one day while the rest of our, our paranormal family team was upstairs and it was all dark down in here. And as I turned, I saw a silhouette of a, looked like a female figure. This whole area in here was all warm, except this doorway right here. It was cold. But the paranormal family team believes that something else may reside down here in the basement feeding on the tragic history of this house. This is where, this is where the mother load for me happens right here. Me and another fellow was standing in this position right here. I had an old man laugh come up to me in my ear and was very um, vigorous about it. <laughs> yeah. And the guy next to me, he had gotten scratched. There's no way he could have scratched himself. We lifted up his shirt. It was forming as we lifted it up. Um, scared the snot out of me. <laughs> that was one of my first experiences, and I was like, wow. <laughs> Tell me paranormal ain't true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's not just the physical attacks. It seems this entity likes to play psychological games as well. We were downstairs. My son likes, at that time, he liked to hear cowboy boots tapping on the concrete floor because he's um, mildly autistic. So the noise is a big thing for him. And so he couldn't walk quietly. We're watching him walk in front of all the flashlights and he's not making a sound. So we were upstairs cleaning one day. I was kind of in mid conversation or whatever with him when I felt the presence behind me. So I turned around to look to make sure it was my son. And as I'm turning back, I realized that the eyes are black. 100% look just like him. The bouncing curls, everything. A couple minutes later, here comes my son walking up the stairs. It's hard to tell what brought this dark entity into the house. Could it be the constant heartache and tragedy? Or maybe it entered 
through the open portals upstairs? Or is it a combination of both? Either way, we have our work cut out for us tonight. So now, Dave, we know a little bit more about the Davies house. And we know there were deaths in this house. There was extreme trauma and sadness. And from what they told us, there was ritualistic witchcraft performed in the house to open portals to the spirit world. In this very room that we're standing in. I'm excited to set up cameras and to leave this house empty for an hour to see what it can pick up on during our abandonment session. Are you ready to get started? I'm more than ready. Let's get everything set up, get our cameras placed, and get out the door so we can see what we can get tonight. Let's do it. This is Paranormal Quest, the Davies house. All right, so we are getting ready to leave for abandonment. We have the house set up with cameras, equipment, some trigger objects, some things that we feel would get a reaction. We're gonna leave for an hour. Find out what happens inside the Davies house when it's completely empty. Right now we're standing in Rita's room, the room of a woman who was almost like a prisoner in her own home because she was stuck in a bad marriage. They say she almost has a childlike energy. So we have this doll set up right here with multiple of these motion activated cat balls set up here as well as the music box, which is set up right here, as you can see. If anything moves in this area in front of it, it's gonna set that off. Out here in the main living room area, we have an action cam set up to cover that entire area. You can basically see from the front door all the way through, and if anything moves, anything happens, we'll know because that area is wired with motion sensors, which will go off if anything moves through that area. Downstairs in the basement, we have a camera set up in the room where Deborah lost her life. There's a lot of speculation, a lot of mystery surrounding her death, and hopefully she can give us some answers as to what happened, but there's a REM pod sitting right over by where she passed away. Upstairs on the second floor, that is the area where a woman who lived here named Monica ended up performing rituals which Hope and Mike believe may have opened a portal or multiple portals inside the Davies house. And one last thing I wanted to mention here about Rita's room. We also have the plasma ball set up and Mike and Hope told us that they've actually seen something touch it. And if something does actually come in contact with it, with static energy, we will notice, we will see. So we're gonna leave the house empty. You ready, Dave? See what happens while we're gone? Let's do it. Let's go. That's us passing through. Crushing of the cat ball. Our abandonment sessions are a great way not only to get a baseline within the location, but also to see what paranormal activity occurs when the house is completely empty. With the Davies house covered with cameras on all three floors, if something happens, we're sure to capture it. But to our surprise, the house is eerily silent for almost the entire 70 minutes that we're gone. None of the equipment triggered at all, and the only sounds that we captured were all too distant to determine what caused them. It is disappointing to have an abandonment session so quiet but what we are about to experience and capture when we return will make up for it entirely. Dude, no way.
All right. What the hell? Hold up. We weren't moving in front of it. The motion sensor is set up right here. Pointing out towards this open room right here. And as Dave and I are getting the SLS camera together, that motion sensor just went off. Yeah. We're good to go. Oh, yeah. You ready? Yep. Rita or Mr. Um, Davies or any of the Davies family, if you walked in front of that little box and made it go off, made it chime like that, can you do it again for us when we're up here? That was weird. What happened? There was a figure there as soon as I turned this around and then it disappeared. Don't. What did it say? Couldn't make it, it sound like don't. But it, I could have misheard it because we're all the way downstairs. We know that you don't like cameras. We've heard that. But we've got a lot of them tonight, so. The SLS camera that Dave is using maps shapes by projecting infrared lasers that bounce back into the sensor. If the camera detects a human shape, it's marked with a stick figure. It's possible that when Dave turned around, the sensor detected a human shape we couldn't see with our own eyes. And when it disappeared, almost as fast as it appeared, it shot upward. Meanwhile, the ghost tube on the second floor picks up on fluctuations in magnetic fields and chooses a word within an 850 word dictionary corresponding to those readings. And it's particularly weird to us that Mike and Hope told us off camera that they found the Davies family doesn't like video being recorded. And as we briefly capture a figure on the SLS camera in the kitchen, it shoots upward, almost immediately followed by the ghost tube on the second floor saying, Don't. It could be a coincidence, but it's a very odd sequence of events, and we've only just started this session. That's me, sorry. Talk with me. We're here to talk. Can you see that little red light on the ground over there? Can you try to turn it on? Try and pick it up. It's right in front of me here, I'm pointing at it. If there's anyone up here that came through one of Monica's portals, the doorways. My name is Ryan and this is Dave and we're here to talk to you. We don't care who you are, whether you're human or inhuman, whether you mean well or to do us harm, we want you to show yourself to us so that we can tell your story. Right in front of Dave there, on the chair, there's an Ouija board or a talking board or a spirit board. And if you could move that planchette, we'd appreciate it. Use your energy or you can use our energy to touch it. Whoa. What was that? That wasn't you? No, that was down at the bottom of the stairs. Somebody down there?
We heard someone was getting scratched and all kinds of crazy stuff was happening in here. Who's attacking people in this house? Is there something that travels through this mirror? Did Monica turn mirrors into portals? Portals that have never been closed? Whoa. Was that you? No. Wasn't it was, me either. It was right over here. Right by the mirrors. Yeah. Actually, by that one mirror that reappeared, they said. Oh, that's right. This mirror right here is the one that they said was up here before but reappeared. One of the originals. Is this how the monster gets in and out of the house? The one that scratches people? West. Ooh. It just said something. Mirror. Mirror! Dude, no way. That's me. It said mirror, man. What? As soon as I picked it up and moved it. As soon as you moved that mirror. That. Me too. It said something before it said mirror. Yeah, I know. But I couldn't make chair. it. Chair. Chair. And I, what did I lean it up against? The chair. Holy I am crap. Covered in f chills, dude. Yeah. Wow. Holy crap. Maybe, maybe it's true. Maybe facing the mirrors together does create a portal. Is that how it works? Dave is moving the REM pod. Dude. That was some responsiveness unlike any we've had. To have you pick up that mirror and lean it against the chair, and then have it say mirror chair. That's just too weird. Ooh, it's just said something. Mirror. Mirror! Dude, no way. That's me. It said mirror, man. What? It said something before it said mirror. Yeah, I know. But I couldn't make chair. it. Chair. Chair. And I, what did I lean it up against? The chair. You know, interestingly enough, that happened. When the door was shut, when the door was closed. Do you not like the door being closed? <clears throat> That's so weird. I was going to suggest that you do that. You know what's weird? What? If you think about it, it's like that door was shut. And it's saying that it was like, even though the door is shut, I still know what's going on in there. Mm -hmm. I know where you just put that mirror. Right. Love. What do you love? Would you feel comfortable putting your left and right hand on both mirrors? Yeah. Is this how you enter this house? 
Did Monica open a passageway for you through the mirrors? Can you roll that back? We're gonna take it away. Invisible. What if I turn all these mirrors around? We'll start with this one. Whoa. What? There's something in the mirror. Really? Not the one you're touching. The one furthest away. This one? The one closest to. Oh, it's just gone now. That is weird. That is weird. This SLS camera has been sitting stationary for almost 20 minutes. And the mirror hasn't moved. If it was reading the mirror as a false positive, it would have done it almost immediately. And we know that this isn't Dave's reflection either. As that can be seen here, with only the reflection of his arm in view. And when Dave points at the mirror that the figure is in, it just disappears. So we have no idea what the SLS camera could be mapping in this mirror. If you have any opinions on this, let us know what you think down in the comments. Just for and giggles, go stand in front of that mirror that is still turned around. Stand to your right. Reach out. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing's showing up in that. Yeah. Nothing's showing up in the mirror now. An SLS figure showed up in that mirror. Wow. Not over the mirror, in the mirror. Wow. This is EVP session. Second session, first floor. Whoa. Was that you? No. It's pointed back toward the stairs. Whoa, 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 whoa. Roll it. Dave Audio, second session. Whoa. Is there someone over by the stairs? Do you like hearing that music? Could you step right in front of it so it plays the music longer for us so we know that it's you? That's it. Stand right in front of it, please. Thank you. Rita, there's a doll sitting on the bed that we left for you. If you grab it, it'll make those lights turn on. Rita, do you sometimes try and come out into the hall here? Is that why they see shadows? Rita, if you want to play with some of these other toys, I'm going to put this ball right here. And all you have to do is light it up and touch it. But I'm going to sit down right here with you now. 
and I have a box in my hand that if you walk up to me and you try and use this to speak, we can hear your voice. And you can try and say your name just like I'm saying mine. Ryan, can you say Rita? Rita, were you locked in this house, unable to get out because your husband wouldn't let you? Which one of these toys is your favorite? What'd you hear? Sound like a strange voice that came through there. Hmm. If you don't like us being in the in your room, all you have to do is tell us to get out, and we'll be we'll, we'll be happy to leave. As I was reviewing the spirit box session, I heard what sounded like a woman's voice. But it wasn't coming through the spirit box. You may need headphones to fully hear and understand what she's saying. But take a listen and see what you think. Mr. Davies, are you here? I'm here. Did you hear that? I thought it said coming. Oh, it sounded like I'm here to me. Whoa. Mr. Davies, are you on your way? Did it say basement? It sounded like it said basement. I thought it did say basement. Yeah. Basement. Basement. Did, what? Did it say basement? It sounded like it said basement. Who's the person in the basement that likes to scratch people and corner them and make them feel uncomfortable? Are we gonna hear from them when we go down there? What? Did you hear that? No. It goes, yeah! <laughs> really loud. Are we gonna hear from them when we go down there? That's awesome, we can't wait to hear from him. Or whoever they are. Rita, if you can hear me, my name is Dave. That's my friend Ryan out there. And we just came here to talk to you tonight. And you can talk back to us through this equipment that we have around here like this. Or through this box that I'm holding in my hand right here. Rita, can you say yes or no whether or not you're here? The way it sounds is that you had a very rough life here in this house, is that true?
What was that? What? That sounded like a woman's voice right there. It did. Did he force you to stay in here? Very quiet on this level. It is. I don't know why, I just feel very drawn to this room. To that room. Could be a safe space. Maybe. Maybe Rita felt safe in here. Yeah. After all the stuff she was put through. There's only one part of the Davies house that we've yet to investigate. This is where the mother load for me happens, right here. Um, when he went back down there later, she was, of course, gone. This is where she hung herself here. And as I turned, I saw a silhouette of a, look like a female figure. What, whatever's in the basement seems to be more powerful than she is. He had gotten scratched. We lifted up his shirt. It was forming as we lifted it up. With so much darkness and tragedy in the basement, this will be a perfect place for a sensory deprivation Estes session. But if it is true that the portals that Monica opened are on the second floor, we need to cover that area as well. So we'll put a thermal imaging camera pointing from the room with the mirrors facing toward the stairs on the opposite end to see if anything manifests on this floor while we're making contact in the basement. All right, Deborah, my name is Ryan and I'm here to talk to you. Five. Bye or five? Are there five of you here? I'm gonna shut the door to the basement. We can have some alone time, some quiet time. Is there something that's not so nice down here? Is there something that means to do people harm? The body. The body. Right after Dave receives this response, the thermal imaging camera on the second floor captures a very strange anomaly. A cold signature stretching from the bottom of the frame to the top, appears out of nowhere. It's slender and thin, but very noticeable. And we've never seen anything like this before. It's not a cold spot or a humanoid shape, but instead, a perfectly straight line of cold energy. Could this be some sort of tear between our worlds? Is this the portal we've heard so much about? Let us know what you think down in the comments below. Whose body? Is there something on the body that would give more clues? We're not. We're not. We're not, We're not what? Who is it that likes to scratch people down here and likes to attack people? Fact. Who is it that likes to pretend to be Ray? You know Ray. There's a male voice there. I couldn't make that one out. Huh. What do you get? from pretending to be someone that you're not. Sounded like it said sweet pepper. Oh, 
Can you tell me? Runner. I'm not running. Are you running? You. Is it working? Oh, it's working. Are you mad at us because we turned the mirrors around? Would you like it if we turned the mirrors back around? Something back here? You want me to come back there? Put me back here, maybe? Who put you back there? Did someone conjure you back there? Did someone open a doorway that they couldn't close inside this house? <sighs> Deborah, did someone hurt you? What, what what happened? Why did you end up dying the way that you did? Where'd you go? Why'd you stop talking? There was a male voice. I couldn't make it out. Who is the man that's speaking to us? My name is Ryan and that's Dave. Tell us your name so we know who we're talking to. I'm going to ask the questions. You speak through Dave. Male voice couldn't make it out. Hmm. Could you speak more clearly? Take a step closer to Dave so we can hear what you're saying and then try and speak again for us. Slang or slant or something like that. I'm going to ask again because no one seems to answer or say anything. Who is it that copies people? Something return. Who is it that mimics people? That's, that's kind of our thing. That's kind of your thing, huh? It's not a thing that's very mean and sadistic. I don't care if it's your thing or not. I tell you what, go to Dave right now and tell him how many fingers I'm holding up right now. How many fingers am I holding up? There's no. There is no. There's no what? Talking to or something like that? If you don't want to talk to me, I'll leave. Convince me not to leave. If you are trying to talk to me, tell me not to leave. Go back. Go back or come back. All right. I'm coming. Will you tell me what happened to Brent, uh, to Deborah? Tell me exactly what happened to Deborah in this basement. He beat her? Who did? Who beat Deborah? Perfect. Perfect. Was someone abusive to Deborah? That hovers. That hovers. 
something happened. We're so sorry if that's true and he was actually mean and he Something be- happened. Something happened. What happened? Does everyone know the true story, the real story of what happened, or is there more to it that people don't know? Hello? Speak to me or came to me? I'm trying to speak to you. I'm right here. Tell me what he did. Tell me who it was that did the things to you that caused you so much pain, Deborah. Where'd you go? This was probably one of the most interesting Estes Method Spirit Box sessions we've ever performed. While we didn't get more information about the dark entity, a man seemed to be giving us information about Deborah's tragic situation, and whoever it was seemed to be able to hear us. If you are trying to talk to me, tell me not to leave. Go back or come back. But apparently couldn't give us all the details. Hello? Whatever secrets are being kept in this basement weren't meant for us to hear. The Davies house has a fascinating history, and the legends of this house won't stay hidden for long. As more paranormal investigations are conducted, this house very well could become a beacon for paranormal research. Why, why do you think he watches you when you're asleep? I wake up and see him. What the f*** was that? That almost sounded like a damn voice. All he did say was that he woke up, obviously couldn't move, and he saw something crawling up the bed at him. You've got to be kidding me. What is it? What is it? Did you just come out of the bedroom? If you're here with us, can you make that stop? So we're kind of right across the street from the house here. And this was one of the first private residences that we've done in a long time because we're just really picky about private residences, right? Yeah, it's just, I mean, you run into a lot of scenarios with residential cases. A lot of people, you know, sometimes just want attention. You know, they want, in one way or another, promote their house, you know, in hopes that it will get a lot of notoriety as being haunted. So you run into a lot of uh, just false information. Yeah. These people seem like they're actually having a lot of mental and emotional distress from what's happened inside the house. And so far, every everybody seems like they're telling the truth, that they're very genuine, that there's something antagonizing them in their house and they genuinely don't feel comfortable living in here. But they've only lived here for like eight months or something like that and they... Well, that's not, that's no time at all. No, and in that time she said she has been, she's gone to the doctor and had to have been put on multiple five or six different antidepressant medications because she just feels depressed and drained and oppressed when, when she's living in this house. And so this is really taking a toll on their lives and I think it's good that we can go in and try and see if we can at least document it. And then from there if we can get rid of it and help them get back to living a normal life that would be ideal. So, and then from there, who knows, but I know it's going to be an interesting night. So, Lori, you've had a lot of experiences in the house here. What happened here in this living room that you can say probably was the most terrifying or was the most intimidating? Um, I was laying on the couch, my head here, and as you can see, the pictures are hung up the steps, and one of my youngest son literally flew straight down, barely missed my head, glass all over, I was covered up with a blanket, glass all over the blanket, it actually hit 
right here, and my head was right here. So it literally came off of the wall. Yes, and flew. And flew down, down yes. and hit hit the couch yes. where your head was. Yes, and there was glass everywhere. But do you think that was something that was intentionally trying to throw that at you, or do you think it meant you harm? Yes. You think it did? Honestly, yes. I seem to be the target. Who do you feel is the most malicious or the most malevolent? The man. The man? Where do you yes. see him most often? Um, when I'm trying to go to sleep. In your bedroom? In my bedroom. So, Laura, you think the man most often visits you whenever you're asleep in here? Yes, or trying to go to sleep. Or trying to go to sleep. Yeah. Why, why do you think he watches you when you're asleep? I wake up and see him. And when you wake up and you see him standing over top of your bed, what does he look like? He has a... I really can't see his face. And I experienced complete sleep paralysis. And he was standing where, back a little more than where you're standing. Never experienced it in my life. I can't move. I can't breathe. The only thing I can do is open my eyes. That's it. Do you think that has something to do with him or do you think that's something that's completely separated? Do you think that is from the activity here? I do because I'd never experienced it in my life and my youngest son experienced it here and he had never experienced it in his life either. And in the time that you've lived here, how has it affected your mood? <sighs> Five antidepressants. Never was, never needed it before. No energy. It's hard to even get out of bed. I mean, that I'm not allowed to sleep, it seems. So, like, I feel like something is literally just sucking my energy from me. Now, is there any other part of the house where you've experienced a lot of activity besides here? Um, in the basement. In the basement? Okay. Yeah. We'll go there. I hate it down here. You hate it down here? The kids all used to hang out down here when they were in high school. Had the TV, couch, all that down here. But they got to where they didn't like it either. So what type of activity generally happens down here? Why don't you like it? Um, well, I don't want to sound completely insane, but I done this. Do you think maybe you were influenced to draw this by something? I have no idea. I walked down the steps, it was in the middle of the night, and I grabbed the kids all, always had their Sharpies out, and I grabbed them and I sat down on the floor and I just started drawing. And the next day when I looked at it, I thought, what is that? What, I remembered doing it, but I, it was like a vague memory. Huh. Yeah, that one kind of scared me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Down here is also where I was sitting on the phone speaking to somebody about it one night. Yeah. And I always have this on. Always. It was a gift and I never take it off. And they don't like to be talked about in the house. I felt like I was burning after I got off the phone. And I went upstairs and looked in the mirror. I thought, why am I burning so badly? I was red, like somebody had like welded, just bright red. All right, so Tully, could you tell me uh, some of what your experiences are in your old house here? Just hear people walking upstairs and nobody's up there. And one morning, I was actually getting ready to get up for work, but somebody was standing by the bed yelling my name. They, I mean, it woke me up. Hmm. And when I looked, there was nobody there. Our granddaughter went upstairs into this room and uh, come downstairs and said she wasn't going to come back and go back upstairs. And you know, later I found out that something scared her up there. So me being me, I went up there in that room, shut the door, told them to leave the grandbabies alone, or I was going to burn this place down and they wouldn't have no place to live. Right. Well, it quit for a while, but don't mess with my family. We've been told that it's partially built on an Indian burial ground. Really? Maybe that could be why the energy is constantly you know, so high, because they believe yeah. those burial grounds were sacred. And if those burial grounds were displaced, that it could lead to a lot of bad things to happen. How many spirits or how many people or things do you think are here in the house? That I've 
heard or have known of at least two. One of them being that little girl in the basement because she said hi to me mm -hmm. <laughs> while I was down there by myself. Really? Yeah, for a split second. My mom had just walked upstairs and I was still sitting on the steps all of a sudden. It sounded like my niece actually and just, hi. I don't do little kid spirits. <laughs> and you audibly heard. It was very clear. So you, you have a brother named Austin and he doesn't like to be in the house at all, does he? He absolutely refuses to be in the house by himself. All he really, he didn't really want to talk about it a whole lot, but all he did say was that he woke up, obviously couldn't move, and he saw something crawling up the bed at him. Almost like an old woman. With like, real stringy dark hair. We've actually looked into the whole sleep paralysis thing, and everything we've read said it was the hag. You've got to be kidding me. What is it? What is it? Did you just come out of the bedroom? If you're here with us, can you make that stop? <laughs> oh my god. I've got chest pains, actually. Can you make the second light? Grab a hold of it. Give it all the energy you have. Use ours. That's it. Oh, a little more energy. Can you move that device? Just move it to the side, left or right? Dude, I got chills. Yeah. What about one of these bedroom doors? So we were just down here talking about where we were going to set up our cameras and stuff. And earlier I had went up and set up the rim pod on the banister upstairs, just, you know, getting placement of where we wanted to do stuff. Had completely forgotten about it. It had been 10, 15 minutes. And then all of a sudden, Jason was like, uh, do you guys hear that noise? And it didn't really click with us what was going on, but the rim pod was actually going off. So we weren't expecting that at all. And when we went up there and I walked in this room to set up my phone, it hasn't happened since, no. which is odd. It's pretty awesome, man. It's crazy. <laughs> and it's still pretty young even. Yep. and turn on the portal box. We are in their living room. The bedroom is right back here behind us. This is the bedroom where they said they see someone standing over the bed. Why do you think he watches you when you're asleep? I wake up and see him. That right there is a bypass. Oh, oh this is hard. Whoa. Say so Steve. Oh, are we recording? Yes. What this is is just a PSB7 spirit box, filters out the white noise using this amplifier, the pedal box. So any voices that come through, we'll pick them up right here. We have a REM pod on. Hello?
Who are we talking to? Who's the one who uh, activated the uh, the gadget up there in the uh, upper hallway? You've got to be kidding me. What is it? What is it? Did you just come out of the bedroom? If you're here with us, can you make that stop? What's your name? The blonde lady that lives in this house, do you know her? That was weird. What's that? It sounded like it said a full sentence. Were you upset by all the renovations done to the house? Yes or no? something upstairs again. Are you upstairs? Can you come down? What are your intentions? Free? You want to be free? Who is that old hag that Austin saw crawling across the bedroom floor up onto his bed when he was asleep? Can you crawl down these stairs? What'd that say? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I thought. It's like, yeah. Well, do it then. I'm standing right here at the bottom. Why don't you crawl down? That's that 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 is a different voice. Wait, what have we been hearing? Are you the dark figure that was been seen in here? Say the say the leave. You're gonna have to speak a little more clearly than that. I just got, Said, yeah. I got freaking cold chills all over my body. Wow. Now, I think I heard something different than Lee, but okay. I, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I'll just say it. If we were to send one of us, a, one of us were to go alone somewhere, where should we go? Jason. You want Jason to go alone somewhere? I went up there in that room, shut the door, told him to leave the grandbabies alone, or I was going to burn this place down, and they wouldn't have no place to live. This is full volume. Oh, REM pods going REM pod out. just chirped. Did it really? Yeah. Yes. 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 Did you do that because I was over by the stairs? You know, so you said it, yeah, and there's like three different yeses after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many of you are there? Can you give us a number? 
ten. You sound like ten. Okay, the REM pod just went again. Did it? Says there's ten. So I guess you can say there's many of you. I heard something. There. Buddy Ryan's going upstairs. Could you go up and make yourself known to him? Maybe move something? Heard a sound up here. Which room? The bedroom straight ahead. Oh, the one with the, uh, the, the old lady was seen? Yes. All he did say was that he woke up, obviously couldn't move, and he saw something crawling up the bed at him. We've actually looked into the whole sleep paralysis thing, and everything we've read said it was the hag. If the old lady that was reported in that middle bedroom, if you're here right now, can you make yourself known to Ryan? Can you move something behind me? Well, we're going to keep trying to make communication with you. What do you think of that? Whoa. Uh, was that you? Uh, no. What the hell was that? That was straight ahead. The bedroom? It was one of the bedrooms. We Wait. heard it all the way down here, man. Was that door open? What door? I think maybe, 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 maybe I'm losing my mind. But it came from one of those bedrooms. The doors were all open up there, I think. Okay. Which room are you in? Are you right in front of me? David? Did yeah. I just say David? I think it did, didn't it? Oh. Starters? No, I, don't know what you're saying. I think so. So two of us should go outside and two of us should stay in here. Okay. I mean, I'll go outside. But... What do you think? Split up a little bit? Yeah. From what Lori's saying, it seems like whenever she's alone, she feels unsafe. Yeah. And that seems the way, that seems to be when it attacks is when it's yeah. by people by themselves, so. I'd like to get to know at least one of you. With, can you at least give me a name? Okay, I'm sitting on the edge of the bed here. Steve downstairs, I'm up here with the REM pod on the bed. I think this is Alexa's room, but this is the same room where Austin saw the woman, the hag that he said crawling up onto his bed. So, check this out. I have the... Who's upstairs in the bedroom? What's the name of my friend who's up there in the uh, in the bedroom? I want to make communication with whom or whoever that's been causing turmoil for this family, especially Lori. I want to know what your intentions are. I'd like to know right now. Who's 
the old hag. If we need to, what do you feel about if we had this house blessed? So you tried to scare Austin up here and I'm up here all by myself right now in that same room. You paralyzed him in his sleep and tried to crawl up on this bed with him. Are you attached to the house or attached to the family? You say family, yes or no? Why? Again, we've been told you have the ability to move things. Son literally flew straight down, barely missed my head. Glass all over, I was covered up with a blanket. Glass all over the blanket, it actually hit right here, and my head was right here. Again, we've been told you have the ability to move things. Uh huh, all right. Me being in the house with you, I think, seems to be stunting some of the activities. I'm gonna leave the candles rolling up here with the ring pot on that bed. Okay. And I'm going to step outside for like five minutes and see if that okay. boosts anything up. Yeah. I'm excited to see what will I'm just going to take five minutes and step out with them. And All right. I'll be here waiting. Just uh, don't scare the crap out of me when you come in. <laughs> I am officially the only person in the residence. Just so that's documented. All right. So there's quite a few of you in here, so I don't know who I'm talking to, so what, what's your name? Dave? You say Dave, or... Did you follow Lori and her family here from a different place? Yes or no? Where are my friends at right now? Ryan, Dave, and Jason, where are they at? Can you tell me? Can you make a, just a knocking sound upstairs? Just a knock? How about on three? If I count to three, could you make a knocking sound? On one, two, three. You touch the rim. Can you touch the rim pot on the count of three? One, two. Three. Or make a loud knocking sound. I try to be rude. We just want to know, just want to know you're here. We can't see you. You know, so try to make. Uh, an audible communications about what we have, you know, what we can do. Coming back in the house. What's up? How's it going? Pretty quiet.
think Jason's going to do a solo here now. Okay. Hey. My name is Jason. Tell me your name. Now we've just been downstairs a little bit earlier. We had heard some movement, some noises coming from upstairs. I'm just coming up here for a little bit of conversation. Coming up here to maybe see if it was you that we were hearing. What the f was that? Was that you? I don't know if that was a. That almost sounded like a damn voice. being that little girl in the basement because she said hi to me all of a sudden it sounded like my niece actually and just hi what the f was that look this family's been experiencing some pretty freaky stuff in this house and we're here tonight to try and get some answers for them and to get to talk to you and at least maybe get your side of the story. Now, if there's anything you'd like to say, I'm all ears. You can speak to me. You can show yourself to me. I know that they've seen you in here before. Did something happen to you here on this property or? Why are you or you all here in this home? can't make a noise in here with me can you make a noise out there around the stairs please That door right there doesn't look like it'd be too hard to move. Could you at least close it around for me? Let me ask you this. If you 
can understand. <clears throat> Are you a Native American? Are you an Indian? Okay, let's get some movement. Well, if so, I mean you no disrespect. Trust me, I respect you. I have Indian in my blood. Please feel free to communicate. I, I would like to talk to you. I know this is your land, but can you tell me what happened to you here? I do want to thank you for anything that you did say. I'm going to leave you with the utmost respect. If you are Native American, otherwise, you need to stop bothering this family and you need to start speaking up to us tonight. recording in a video. There is a moth in here with us. Is that? Yes. We want to talk to the little little girl or little kid. If you're here with us, can you say something? We came down here to play. What does that drawing mean that you had Lori do down here? Do you think maybe you were influenced to draw this by something? I have no idea. I walked down the steps, it was in the middle of the night, and I grabbed the kids all, always had their Sharpies out, and I grabbed them, and I sat down on the floor, and I just started drawing, and the next day, when I looked at it, I thought, what is that? It was a heart with a knife and a tree. Did somebody kill you and bury you under a tree? What if I sat at the bottom of the stairs? Sir. I think so far tonight it's been pretty interesting. I mean, we have to keep in mind that early on in the night we had that REM pod activity that really started the night out strong, and we've had some interesting voices through the portal, some interesting sounds upstairs early on, and it's kind of died off as we've gone along here. In the basement, Steve's right, it has felt really, really comfortable. So, I don't know. It seems like there is activity, but I feel like maybe there's something that instigates the activity, something that helps boost the activity. Maybe it's Lori herself, I don't know. But What do you think, sir? I agree with what you guys are saying. Obviously, we had a couple things happen. Rim pod earlier being pretty notable and some few noises here and there upstairs, mostly it seems like. Hey, never know uh, to review, maybe we'll 
especially abandonment, like Dave mentioned earlier. You yeah. know, you never know what's going to come up on the abandonment footage. You know? Hopefully the proof is in the pudding. Yep. Well. We came, we saw, we conquered. Lori's on her way back to the house. And we are going to be packing up the equipment. Once they get here, Steve is going to be going throughout the house, doing a blessing, helping them feel a little bit safer in their home. That way they can feel more comfortable and hopefully what this energy that Lori's picking up on that's making her feel depressed, it'll lighten that a little bit. One of the, uh, the main thing with, um, with doing this is it's not always so much cleansing the house, it's helping empower the people who are living through it. So um, I'm a firm believer in, in each one teach one, which I learned from a prof my, one of my professors in Florida. And it's an each one teach one method. So what I learned, I want to pass on to you, for you to use, for him to use, and you can pass it on to anyone in the household who's being affected. All right. I rebuke and cast out any spirit that would attempt to oppress me in the name of Jesus. I rebuke all spirits of madness and confusion that would attempt to oppress my...